hey everyone. Well that was just a few clips of what it's like to be at the marina when there's a bit of a storm blowing and what was a little more unique about that storm was that it coincided with a higher than average tide. So you could see in some of the clips that the water was quite high and there was some flooding in areas of Richmond and Delta as a result of the storm and the tidal surge. Of course I went up to the parking lot to get some video shots from there and I started talking to one of the neighbors that lives on his boat on the other dock next to us. So I turned the camera off and when I turned the camera back on I noticed hey this green boat has broken its bow line or the dock broke or something but now it was uh, being pushed towards the shore only being held by the spring line and by the stern line. So I turned the camera off and we ran down and tied the boat up again. It actually snapped his bow line. He had a very thin bow line on and I told the marina, not looking for any uh, credit or pat on the back, but I just did not want to be the last guy that tied this guy's boat up. Of course the power went out in the area and like the storm on August 29th I think it was of last year, the power was out for several hours. Well in that case it was out for a couple days. I was again reminded how nice it is to be a liveaboard and have all my lights and have heat. So I found a good book to read and turned the heater on and just sort of hunkered down for the day. And I wasn't planning on doing anything outside. It was pretty wet and rainy and it was one of those days just to curl up with a blanket and read a good book. I think it was in my last video or the video before I mentioned that I did some maintenance on my outboard engine for the dinghy and that included getting a new spark plug and taking apart and cleaning the carburetor and the fuel pump but I still wanted to do an oil change so the last time I went and got those parts it's at a place called Bridgeview Marine and it's over in Delta but you can actually see the shop from my marina and last time I drove you have to drive all the way around go over a bridge I thought since I could see it maybe I would just take the dinghy across and see if that was much quicker. Well it turned out to be super fast especially on a nice calm day like I had so I'll just take you guys along and show you how I did that. So if I was to drive my car to get the oil, I'd have to go from my marina, which you can see there is the large barge, and I'd have to drive all the way over the Alex Fraser Bridge into Delta, and there's the marine shop that I'm heading to. got everything I need and I guess I'll head back now and change the oil on that outboard. So as many of you know I like to use my little wall furnace from time to time and what I discovered recently was that when it's raining out and I used the furnace a little tiny drip was coming out 
of the location where the pipe goes through the cabin top. But if it was raining out and I wasn't using the furnace, this was not leaking. Now on the top side of the deck, it's contoured where the pipe comes out. So there's a wood block, like a big wedge, that keeps the chimney top, like the little vent, upright. So I'm thinking that the wood was heating up and it was allowing a little tiny bit of water coming in and dripping down. So when I took the block off, unfortunately I think it was bedded with a 5200. That means it broke off in three pieces, but wood glue is amazing with clamps and everything and I put it all back together. I've been working on it, varnishing it, and it's uh, almost done. I just put another coat of varnish on this morning. It's nice to do these things, uh, rebed things on the top side because then you know when it's been done last because who knows when that was done, maybe never. Uh, probably since it's been installed and I don't know when that fireplace was installed. Since I was redoing the block on the top side I thought this would be a good time to replace the top vent as well because the old one was bent a bit. It's actually not the best design unless you have a guard for it because every now and then a sheet would get caught on it and uh, it, you'd have to go up there and release it but it almost there were times I thought it was going to pull the thing right off so I've purchased a guard but I had to order it and I'm still waiting for it so I don't uh, have that to show you guys yet but once it's all done I'll just do a little quick clip and show you guys the finished product but for now uh, it's still ongoing so um, I'll just have to do that later. So keeping up with the spring cleaning theme, I was looking around the boat for more things to do and I noticed the barbecue is looking horrible. I should just get a cover for it or take it off in the winter. I was silly not to take it off and put it away. When this season's over, I'm going to definitely put it away in my locker or something or uh, get a cover for it. But I have the product that I used um, for cleaning the brass clock and barometer and I had a few people ask so this is what it is it's called star clean and it just goes on with a wet sponge and then you use water in the wet sponge to do the final rinse of it and it works really well I use a lot of water on the barbecue because it's not delicate but on the brass clock and the barometer I didn't use nearly as much water obviously but that's what it looks like anyways and a few people had asked what I was using for that so there you go and uh, I'll show you here in a few clips how well it works. It uh, really is a good product, I think. And I'm sure there's other good metal polishers and cleaners out there too, but this is the one I sort of have been uh, using and uh, grown a bit biased to. So anyways, uh, worth a try if you haven't tried it before. Another thing I like to check over is the canvas and I still have to clean it but I noticed one little spot where the zipper was starting to pull away and I just sort of gave it a bit of a push and the whole zipper came off so I decided to not take the whole dodger off and bring it to the shop to get it sewn because I'm probably going to take all the canvas in at the end of the season and get the, the canvas place to look it over and repair any areas that need repairs but uh, for now I thought I would just stitch it up by hand and then it would last till the end of the season at least and it's not a big job to do. Well I think that's it for this video and I know it's just been a lot of maintenance stuff but that's the reality of living on a boat and or even just having a boat and prepping it for the cruising season is making sure it's ready to go because I don't want to be doing all these repairs while I'm out cruising and this is the time that I sort of start working hard at getting the boat ready and finding everything I can to fix and there always seems to be something to fix 
and uh, or maintain or clean. I wish the boat would just stay uh, clean all the time and be maintenance free, but it isn't. That's the reality. But uh, yeah, anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video.